I'm Joyce DiLonato, and this is part of Sing for Today, and it is just such a human thrill to welcome Tom Kardahi here. Um, Tom is a dear friend, um, an incredible producer, a longtime activist for human rights, for gay rights, um, has devoted his life to bettering the world. And I first came to know him because he was the husband of Terence McNally. And we lost Terrence just about 14 months ago. And Tom, it's a joy to welcome you today amongst the grief. And one of the things I wanted to talk with you about at this time is, you know, we're starting to emerge. Um, the light at the end of the tunnel is getting a bit brighter, but we're all left very changed. And it's different um, examples of grief that we've been through and loss. And nobody that I've ever known that I've witnessed has handled it more graciously and humanly and bravely than you have. And so thank you for, for being here today. Thank you. Um, the song that we've chosen for this is Danny Boy. And it's a piece that one of the reasons I think this song works so well is that <clears throat> it evolves over time. Each time you meet it, you're in a different place emotionally and in your stage of life and you encounter the piece a bit differently. So this was recorded here in Barcelona. Um, I'm going to share the video with you. You've not seen it yet. I have not. I want to tell you, I felt Terrence here and I felt his smile over this session. So this is for Terrence. He loved this song. Dead 
Stunning. It's Aww. truly beautiful. Terrence loved that song. I didn't yeah. know that before I chose it. It's a nice, nice Irish boy. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I figured. We can't escape it. Yeah, it's um, what does it evoke in you in in terms of of being the one who is still here? <laughs> to hear that song. First, I have to say that your, your voice has um, direct access to my heart and my tear ducts. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think um, of the many, many things Terrence gave me, I think the greatest gift beyond knowing that I was loved is a deep appreciation for beauty. Mm. And, you know, when I, I hear what feels like a very simple, beautiful plaintive song, sung by one of the greatest voices in the world, um, I, feel, I feel so blessed. I, I, I've shared with you in the past, I live in gratitude. I feel like um, Terrence is very much with me every day. I, you know, it's 14 months. I still wear his ring on my finger with mine. And to lose someone during a pandemic, <clears throat> um, I mean, loss is always difficult, um, but I've learned a lot about um, the importance of the rituals around mourning. Um, and we haven't been able to properly celebrate Terrence's life because we can't gather in a room together safely. And that's mm -hmm. what he would want and that's what he deserves. And I, I, and for Terrence, it needs to be in a theatrical space, but, um, I dreamed of going to Ireland while listening to mm. Danny Boy just now, um, bringing some of his ashes with me um, and spreading some of them. Um, we went to Ireland a number of times together um, from visiting Angela Lansbury in her home to um, having him be celebrated as the ambassador of the um, the, the Irish Queer Theater Festival, and, um, and then um, just time together um, spent in, in a vague search for our ancestral roots. We both have um, Irish in our heritage, but um, there is nothing, and I mean nothing, uh, Terence loved more than the music and um, specifically operatic voices um, interpreting music. And I always knew he was happy when I came home and music was playing. Um, he listened to music when he wrote. And mm -hmm. so um, I would often hear your voice, Joyce, uh, when he was in his office and the louder the volume got, the more I knew that he was sort of creating a new world and bringing out the voices of, of um, new characters. Um, oh, that gives me chills because you can feel it, the, 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 it boiling to the surface and you-, you it, was, it was very sexy to me. <laughs> I, I mean, I thought, wow, he is <laughs> in there, just that, that mind and that soul and that heart is creating something, you know, um, that nobody's ever seen before. And um, I love that. Um, and, and, and his words, it's giving birth to a new opera or a new play, something exactly. that never happened. Exactly. And there was always mystery. You know, I could hear the, the tap of the keys on the keyboard. And um, 
Um, so, so in those, I don't know if that was four minutes or what that was, but I went to a lot of different places um, through that music. That makes me so happy. I think it's one of the things that I find so mystical and still mysterious and at the same time so concrete how music can connect us and it can connect us through time and through place because it evokes in us the memories but that that in that song that touches us or connects us to um, uh, a person or a place or a time it we're there again in the music yeah. it's it's like time traveling and yeah. when we started this and um, it's always a little bit crazy with the video and there's lighting and there's camera and you can tell i'd already been crying a little bit just thinking about it i needed a makeup check there is there was this moment it was about the third take where i just instead of focusing on all the cameras and everything it was uh, yeah, Joyce, you're here for a reason. And that's when the smile, that infectious, like contagious smile of Terrence came around. And it just everything settled. And the song came to life. And it and it's and it continues to be alive through the recording. I think that's the power of a great song. It's so evocative. What are the things you've turned to, if, if I can ask you that, to weather this? Again, as you said, you know, it's the traditional rituals have not been available. And so where have you found comfort? Where, how have you woken up each morning and continued forward? You know, I, I, um, I, I cry a lot. Uh, and I, I, I cry, um, I don't feel weak with my tears. I feel um, blessed uh, to have access to them because I'm, I'm walking and working through my pain, which is very real. Um, I, I live in gratitude. I am, um, I am in recovery. Uh, and I've been 20 years clean and sober. Terrence was more than twice that. Um, so we, we shared that. Um, and every day of my life, I wake up and I make the bed and I do a gratitude prayer. Um, and uh, I've done that for 20 years, 20 plus years. But since Terrence passed on March 24th of last year, it has um, taken deeper meaning. And it's, I, I'm not, I don't have to fake it till I make it with gratitude. I, I feel gratitude to my fingertips because um, when, I, when the two of us were raised, we had a, a, an age difference. He was born in 1938, I was born in 1963. But as two gay men, neither of us grew up with the dream of ever becoming married. Um, that was just not a part of the dream landscape. Mm. And we fell in love very, very quickly um, when we met. Uh, he always claimed it was love at first sight. Um, I was a little freaked out by that. But I knew I was in love. Like, I, I knew, too, that, that I had found love. And to be a part of, we, we were very much a part of the marriage equality movement and to have a front row seat at that history. Um, but to ultimately feel that whether or not our love is state sanctioned, what we have is everything you ever dream about. It's what songs were written about. It's what novels are, you know, it's been the subject of, of art, of a deep, true, lasting love is the subject of the greatest art forever. And we, we had that and I'll always have that. all the things he wrote, <laughs> which had that yeah, and, and the it core was, of it. It's true. I mean, I, what I have that so many people who suffer loss don't have is I have his words to comfort me. I, I very often will read his plays or 
look to a passage in one of his works for wisdom or comfort or just to make me laugh. I've been doing a project yeah. with um, some folks who just love Terence's work and we read a play a week of his. We're reading everything chronologically and then we have a book club every Friday and and we talk about the irreverence and the, the sort of vision and the truth telling and the, the sort of um, uh, the absolute unapologetic manner in which Terence lived his life, whether it was with respect to his sexuality, his values, his beliefs, he, Terence held nothing back. Um, and um, how could I not be grateful? Because he loved so freely and so generously. And, and I, every time I go to a place of sadness or loneliness, and that's often, I recognize I hit the jackpot in the love department. And I have memories that will last, stay with me for the rest of my life. And, and we were smart about our friends. We, we, we really had, and I continue to have great friends. I have um, people like you from across an ocean. We've stayed in touch and in many ways the, the relationships deepen because there's a vulnerability that you allow yourself and, and between a pandemic and the loss of, of um, my husband and, 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 and an industry, we're both in industries where it's so dependent on performing in, law, in shared space. It's, it's that the exchange between artists and audience. Um, so there's so much to mourn and yet there's so much to celebrate because we don't have the luxury of taking anything for granted. And if we do, shame on us. There's, there's a couple things that, that, that calls to mind. I think that vulnerability that was such a signature in Terence's writing that was one of the things that connected the two of you. Neither of you, as far as I've ever known you, you haven't been afraid to be vulnerable. And that means there's something raw and very true about what, how you built your relationship and what you shared. And I find it, I, I feel very um, honored to have a small window into how you've been walking this path in the 14 months. And I think access to vulnerability has been a big gift to you at this time because it means you've been able to live out without the need to mask it or to be strong or to put on a strong, you've been able to let that grieving energy move through you and not stay stuck. And I think that's been one of the challenges for people during the pandemic is how, how can that grief, that wailing that needs to happen and oftentimes happen in community at some point that shared wailing and grief, when that's taken away, how do we let that move through us? We don't stuff it and, and, and let it harm us uh, physically and uh, emotionally. And, and I, I, don't wanna, I don't want my pain to turn into anger or resentment. I want it um, to guide me with purpose and with a deeper love and um, hopefully with more humanity. I, um, I feel like um, being open about my feelings, um, I'm, I hope, and, and there is evidence to support this, that it makes other people feel safer sharing how they're feeling and, and walking through their grief because I've heard from people all over the from all over the world about their loss and um, I, I'm just one of those people who has to sort of share with the world what I'm thinking and what I'm feeling and and hopefully experience love and strength in return um, and and also I really believe that if, if I can make the world just a little more safe for someone else, that's going to help me heal. Um, because um, one of the phrases in recovery is you can't keep it unless you give it away. And I want to, I want to wow. give away, isn't that wonderful? 
I love that. And I feel like I believe that about love and gratitude and um, strength and, and healing. I just think the more I can share my journey while keeping some for myself, um, A, the, the, the more fully I can heal, the more productive I can be as a human being and as a keeper of Terence's legacy and a citizen of the world. Um, and um, maybe uh, I, I'll have more to offer. Um, it's a balm for the pain though. I, it's, I think sometimes the best way through it, when you're ready, when you have the strength and when you've had your private mourning is to go back into service to people. And, and that, because I think that is one of the most healing things you can do. And it's such a testament to, I know the sort of the mantra and the, the theme song that you and, and Terrence have shared is love wins. And that certainly came strong with the whole uh, marriage equality. And of course it, it felt so good, all the posters and, and all of that. But it's extraordinary to see how it keeps winning. Don't don't you feel that? I mean, it's yeah. so simple. Two simple words, and and ultimately, love wins the day. It yeah. really does. Which you, you know, if you saw that, I don't know, on a on a greeting card, you might roll your eyes. But 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 it can't be dismissed. The power of love cannot be dismissed. The um, and and. When all is said and done, fear and pain and racism and xenophobia and all of the sort of horrible issues that, um, the, that have been coming to the surface or resurfacing over the last 14 months, love wins, love wins the day. Tom, I just love you to pieces and I thank you you're about to get Broadway back on its feet. Thank you. But you know, and so I know you're super busy and and it's when I, I knew I wanted to to speak about this. This is coming out for Memorial Day. So we can keep all these beautiful souls in our in our memory and in our hearts alive, full of love. But you're as I said, you're you've handled this with such grace and bravery and I wanted the world to hear a little bit about your journey with this so thank you for being so open and and you thank you I I, I hope that people um understand that that tears are not weakness and that um allowing them allowing themselves the pain is is really okay it's really okay um, because there's no doing an end run around grief and, and, um, grief is a direct, um, response to having loved. And, um, I just, I, if I had a prayer for everyone who is living with loss, it is that they can remind themselves of the blessings of having loved and recognizing that gratitude um, can be a course towards healing. And on that note, I just love you to pieces. I love you too. Oh. Thank, thank you for asking me to be a part of this and for blowing me away with Danny Boy. <laughs> Oh my God! You I have do believe that. you responded in about five seconds with yes. Yeah, you you really have like a, 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 my my um, tear ducts are hardwired to your voice. It's like uh, oh my God! It's just crawls inside my soul and moves me. So thank you, thank you. It's my honor. I love you to pieces. Thanks, Tom.